What is good, you guys? We are back with another episode of Hardwell Talk. I haven't done this in a minute, but Mojo99 um, almost has 50k subscribers. Go ahead, sub to him. I'll have his link in, in the bio, but go ahead, sub to him. He was nice enough to come on with me. Um, yeah, man, we're just going to talk about the NBA playoffs, the 2018 NBA draft, because I'm a Mavs fan. He's a Hawks fan. And then we'll get into like um, like a draft at the end of the episode later. But let's start talking about these two most recent games, the Bucks nets game, which was the one of the most nasty but entertaining games I've seen in a minute, bro. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Bro, uh, Bruce Brown thought he was Kobe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bro, 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 no, 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 crazy. I, I, I'm just joking, Blake. The crazy thing is, this man had like, like a great game, and all anybody rem- remember was those last two possessions, bro. That sucks. And then Joe Harris just go, and then Joe Harris just gets the ditch all the smoke after having a one for ten performance and missing two wide open mid ranges. Yeah, That's crazy, exactly. bro. Like literally, everyone was, including I'm a part of everyone. Everyone was like. Saying, oh man, Bruce Brand's like a fucking six four, six three, however tall he is, center. It's crazy how he's like literally owning Brooke Lopez and all of his stuff because of the covers of the plane, shit like that. Getting so much praise. Everybody's saying they love the way he plays. I'm part of everyone. I love the way he plays. And all of a sudden he just does this shit and all that shit, all that work, all that great he was playing phenomenal defense too. In the passing lanes and all that, bro, ripping the ball. Oh he was he was having a great game, and all that is literally out the window when Joe Joe Harris literally gets no slander or anything. Joe Harris like ducked that. every little bit of smoke he could have got, bro. Oh my god, I have goodness. no he idea how that's it. even possible, bro. But it I literally went on Twitter to looking for people to slander him. I was I was going on Twitter looking for people to slander him. I didn't see one person. Oh my yeah. goodness, yeah, uh, bro. But Kyrie. Kyrie didn't have a great game, but with those type of players, I just expect them to like get back on, you know. Yeah, Kevin exactly. Durant. Yeah, Kevin Durant in the second half was really good, so I'm not really worried. Still, Nets in five to me, to, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I feel like more so. I don't know why, but more so, this still feels like I don't know why, but just a loss for the Brooklyn Nets because the Nets are never, ever, and not in not a single universe going to shoot like 36, 37 percent from the field as a team. They're just way too talented offensively. KD is too is too nice. Um, with the yeah. name, Kyrie too nice. Joe Harris is not going to shoot one for ten again. Yeah, exactly, and that's the only way that the Bucks can win, and they barely won. Just they Michael barely Bruno's won. is a terrible coach, bro. I, like he's a good regular season coach. coach this may be the worst coaching performance I've seen in a win in my life, bro. I ain't yeah, gonna lie. Bro. Yeah, like bro. having Brook Lopez in on, um. Bruce Brown after he makes three floaters and still putting him in like the deepest drop coverage possible is like one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah. I agree. And, like the, crazy. and then the limited Bobby Portis, Portis minutes, like for what? He was bringing the energy when he was in the game. That's, just, I was literally thinking the same as that thing. They need to play Bobby way more than Brooke in this series. Yeah. And honestly, even if they didn't play Bobby, just don't play Brook. Just play Giannis and I guess put Connington in, I guess. At, and then yeah. Giannis in the center or something. Like yeah. if they if they don't play Bobby, but the fact that he's like like Brook is getting ten or ten plus more minutes than him is just wild to me. Especially when he's not hitting his threes. Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, if he's not in his threes, then he's basically useless out there outside of maybe blocking shots here and there once in a while. But, bro, like, other than that, he's basically useless. Stay very true, very right about that shit. Yeah, but uh, look, the Clippers-Jazz game, man. The Clippers, I said, I, I, I'm about to post, like, a post-game recap. It's about to come out in, like, a minute. But, like, um, what I was talking about, they're too cool. They're too nonchalant about everything, in my opinion. Like, Kawhi and PG are way too cool for school sometimes. They they just, like, chill. I'm going to dribble. I'm going to throw the ball behind my back. Da, 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 da. I'm going to let Joe yeah. Ingles walk into a, a transition three. Like it's That just was so Reggie cool. Jackson's fault completely. I know. Reggie Jackson just... stole the bag like, like crazy. Kawhi was even pointing at him. 
and Reggie Jackson was in, Jackson was in his own world. No idea what he was on. But it, when it comes to just like from what I peep, like from when it, when it comes to the Clippers, they just don't have like Kawhi is just not that dude to like get on your ass. You know what I'm saying? He's never it's had to be that dude throughout his career. Like it's back in San Antonio, that's Pop's job, bro. Back in Toronto, bro, that's Kyle Lowry. He's talking to everybody 24 7. And obviously, Nick Nurse is doing that as well. But in the Clippers, it's like, who's Ty Lu going to like? No one's taking Ty Lu too seriously. Paul George is like, he gets on his teammates' ass once in a while, but it's not what he's known for whatsoever. And plus, Paul George is Paul George, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, that team, they're just, they're just like, it, it feels like they're soulless almost, you know? They're so good. Know. They're so talented, bro. Like literally, I was thinking, I was like, man, if we had, if the Mavs had DeMarcus Cousins, he'd be playing thirty minutes. But he could, like, he just started getting playing time. They just have so many people just keep coming. And Terrence Mann hasn't played a minute this series. I don't think. Yeah, that like, shit was look, crazy. Yo, bro, Tyron Lou has proved a lot to me. I know they're down right now, but Tyron Lou has proved a lot to me in this playoffs. Him being like so gutsy, pulling Patrick Beverly all the way out the lineup, pulling him all the way back in, Luke Kennard getting mad minutes, just putting Demarcus Cousins in out of nowhere, taking Terrence Mann out and putting him back in, and it just seems, I don't know how that works in the locker room, but to me, it just feels like it, it's just whatever that game relies on. Maybe it messes up um, the players. Um, the, the players' rhythm, but it just seemed like it works because it's just what, what they need on the floor at the right time. Yeah, exactly. I agree. When it comes to the playoffs, I mean, this is just what you have to do. He's just constantly making adjust, adjustments. He's doing what, like, the whole old coach we were just talking about, Mike Budner, is not doing. He's making adjustments. And I commend him for that. Now, when it comes to, like, chemistry and all that and how it kind of rub may rub yeah. like, certain players the wrong way, like, yeah, it, it it might, but in the grand scheme of things, like, the coach got to do what he has to do. Who gives a fuck about chemistry if you're getting these Ws and also keeping your job at the end of the day? So, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, all in all, Kawhi, Re- Kawhi and Reggie, Reggie was the one that was going crazy down the stretch. And what yeah. pisses me off is that Kawhi wants to be all aggressive against the Mavs, not wanting to pass it to nobody, want to pull up from <laughs> mid every single time. But now he wants to pass it to Marcus Morris and Paul George at the three-point line. Like, yeah. he's just not – he wasn't even near as aggressive as he was in game six and game seven in the last series. Like, I don't know what's going on with him. Bogdanovich is a good defender, but he's not that good to be slowing Kawhi down. So he needs to figure it out. Yeah, it's like Kawhi thing, bro. I think what's his name? Swish out. Literally just tweeted some like Kawhi has never won a series or he's never lost a series when he's been down 0 2. And just like last series against Dallas, of course, he was down 0 2 again. And a lot of people are saying, I believe they're like, I think it's rap. Like, they, like, they're not Dallas. They all they had was Luke and Tim Hardaway, like, like you said, hitting shots once in a while. Man, and look, this Dallas team is completely different. They got options, bro. They got serious options and real firepower. The Dallas Mavericks yeah. have the firepower. Jordan yeah, you're Finney right. Smith, but, whoa, scary. Jordan no, Finney but Smith. man, <laughs> them, them dudes was firepower in the first two games, yeah. bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Dwayne Finney Smith hit like six threes. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I, I'm saying I'm not gonna lose hope on this team until they lose the third game because I just saw what they did to my team. So I'm not gonna say you're disrespected <laughs> yet because I yeah. just saw what happened. So yeah. um although Dwayne, Joe Ingles, Jordan Clarkson, Bogdanovich are all better than than um Dwayne Finney Smith and Kleber and all of them, it, they hit timely shots. Every single time they needed it, and if they don't hit those shots, they the Clippers have a chance. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just that's all I'm saying. And Donovan yeah. Mitchell's playing out of his mind right now. If he has a 25 point game instead of a oh, almost 40, what happens? You know what I'm saying? So if Rudy Gobert gets in foul trouble, which he does, he does seem to get in foul trouble at least one or two times during the series. There's a lot of variables that's going on. Donovan Mitchell is playing like Luca did in this series. He just has the the pieces the past two and hopefully that that continues on for the rest of the series. Yeah, he got he got he got gunslingers. He got Jordan Clark, Jordan Clarkson oh. off the event. I'm not sure what what's his name. Mike Mike Conley is not even playing, and I'm not yeah, sure he, what his injury status is or anything like that. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even know. That, I didn't even know he was gonna gonna be injured until he didn't play the first game. I have no idea what happened to him. Yeah, bro. I haven't. I don't remember what the fuck happened to him either, bro. Mike Conley is super low key, but they have like uh, Bog. Is it Bojan? I think it's Bojan. Yeah, Bojan. Bo- yeah, Bojan. He's a slinger as well. Then you got Joe Wingles, and they just have a lot of pieces that you just cannot sleep on and overlook whatsoever. Any of these pieces, they have at least three players who can give you twenty, other than Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. On any given night, so that's just and the, 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 the crazy thing. Thing is they're missing like a big part of their offense in the pick and roll with Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert. So, yeah. like, like, dude, this Jazz team, I, I, exactly. I think the Suns make the finals, but I can see the Jazz making them because the Suns, the the game manager, I, I feel like it comes down to the point guard and Chris Paul is just. I don't think Chris Paul is gonna let them lose four games, in my opinion. I, mm-hmm. I take. That. Booker over Donovan Mitchell. That's the thing for mm-hmm. me. It's super close, and people have been disrespecting Donovan Mitchell, and I don't want to come off of one of those people. I think it's hella close, but man, Donovan yeah. and Devin Booker is just different, and it it's it's way less effort for him to get forty than it is for Donovan Mitchell. It seems. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I think. Definitely, I can agree with that. Just because I think the Suns are just a better offensive team, and book it has to worry about a lot less for now than donovan mitchell but in general like over the like their entire careers whenever since they've been compared to each other the book and donovan mitchell i've always said literally every single time every season that donovan uh, that devin booker is a much better player well not much better but he's a better player than donovan mitchell it's just like this season They've when they've played against each other, they've had great games. They've had like really memorable, memorable games. But now I'm like, okay, Donovan Mitchell, he's kind of like inching towards. I'm not saying he's better than him, but it's getting really damn close. And, and this and series people, will like break that for me. And what people ask is like, what do y'all want Donovan Mitchell to do? He's been to the playoffs every single year. He's averaging 27 in, in his whole entire career in the playoffs. What do y'all want Donovan Mitchell to do? And honestly, I don't have an answer for you. I honestly just think Devin Booker is more talented. Exactly. Like, like I, it's- I, I really don't think Donovan Mitchell can do anything and more. I just think Booker is more talented. That's my opinion, though. Like, like just just that I he's more talented. That. That's, that's really I can't it. agree with that. In my mind, it's I've always been like this, bro. If you put that man, give Devin Booker in a 45 number – Number 45, Utah Jazz jersey. The Utah Jazz are going to be a better team. And it's just that simple for me, bro. It's just that simple for me. But I'm not going to – I'm not saying this to discredit Donovan Mitchell at all. He's been – like, his his regular season and, like, his postseason play don't compare whatsoever. Postseason Donovan Mitchell is some fucking – it's some serious. Some yeah. super serious. So, I don't know. It's, it's super close. It's like – it's neck and neck if you ask me. Like, yeah, that nugget. Like, we're talking about the Suns like they're already advanced, but I feel like that Nugget series is over. Like they, yeah. <laughs> like they, 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 they missed too many people, in my opinion. That it's not even the, their fault, or like they're just underperforming. They just don't have enough players. And yeah, the, right. the series, the Hawks, Sixers, Hawks, Sixers. Your team, man. We kind of talked about it earlier, but like your team, your team. Um, let's wrap this and, up. <laughs> yeah, uh, like this kind of feels like how. I remember I was listening to um, Suns Geek, right? You remember, um, Sun, you know, Suns Geek? I was yeah. listening to him, his live stream, like, after game three or something, when the Lakers went up 2-1, I think. And he was like, let's wrap this up. I'm so glad to be in the playoffs, da 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 we'll, we'll be back next year, stuff like wow. that. And then they went on to win, and that's how I kind of feel like you talking. So, like, I'm just saying, like, don't – I mean, I, if I was an auction, I wouldn't give a hope. It's 1-1. You so, see, I like, would be like that. I would be like that, and I'm just, that's a great comparison. It's just that the Suns were healthy. We're not healthy. We just lost yeah. our, starting, our starting three, who's, like, plays a major role and is, like, easily, if not the second, then the third most impactful player on our roster. So that's why I'm like, it's a wrap. If 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 Hunter was playing tomorrow night, then I'd be like, yeah, bro, I'm locked in. And like, I'm 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 all in, bro. But I'm not all in anymore. I, I don't I don't have any hopes whatsoever. I think we can, we have a game left in ourselves. We got like one more game, but after that, I'm ready to like cut this shit off because this playoff, Hawks playoff basketball is not good for my health whatsoever, bro. My blood pressure is going fucking to the ceiling, bro. So I'm I I don't need to see Trey Young. 
I don't see. I don't even see the whole timeline talking about Trey or none of that. But I miss like Trey Young being un- like it's not underrated but underappreciated. Because that way, you know, what I'm saying the spotlight's not on him. But like when he's like all the attention's pointed at him, it's just like damn, bro, he's doing all this, going under all the scrutiny and shit like that. I don't know why I feel like this, but it just it just happens when you're a hardcore fan. I just yeah. don't want to see him in the playoffs anymore, bro. Not for now. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> Man, Trey Young is gonna be an insane playoff performer, entertainer for the next 10, 12 years, bro. Like I know. I I, I I can't wait. I hope the Knicks stay good. I can't wait for rematches with the Knicks because that's gonna be something if it if if the Knicks stay good. Um because I know the Hawks will uh so yeah, man. But one thing I wanted to talk to you about, and not a lot of people are talking about this, but there was an, another piece in this Trey Young Luca trade <laughs> that people thought were going to be big, including myself, and that's Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish yeah. was like one of the highest potential guys coming out of the draft, and now he's like he he he. I think he's injured right now, right? He's injured. Yeah, he he's been out for like a damn near the entire season, bro. Damn near the entire. He's only played like maybe sixteen something games, and he's been out for a long time. But he's been out for like because of Achilles soreness. And when it comes to that type of shit, you don't want to play with it, obviously, bro. Young player like him, his play style, he's on the more athletic side of things. You don't want to play play with that at all. So I don't even really want to see him play again. Like I don't want to see him even make an attempt to come back. Just because it's just not worth it, in my opinion. I don't. It's not. It's just not worth it. I'd rather him get fully healthy throughout the summer, work on his game, and et cetera, and just see how much he can improve. But even when he was playing, like he was, he was like, I said this in one of my videos. I'm like, bro, whenever I I see the Hawks play now, I feel a lot less like I feel like a lot less stressed, and I'm I have no worries. And I'm not irritated. Whenever I see Cam Reddish play, bro, I get really irritated just because he's just like he's so good and he's so talented, but he just doesn't show his talents not sure. on most nights. Yeah, exactly. And he had like during the regular season, he had like maybe four, earlier in the season, he had maybe like four good games off the rip. And I'm like, yo, this Cam, this version of Cam Reddish is carrying on like all the great things that he did prior to the prior That's to right. last season. Yeah, he was like he was going crazy, putting up great numbers. He was averaging like maybe fourteen to fifteen out of the roof. The defense yeah. potential was like, bro. Yeah, it still is. That's still there. That's yeah. still there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. It's it's just his it's just his offense, and it's just a big question mark. You know what I'm saying? And like the Hawks with the time with the time period and the the schedule that they're on now, they don't have any time to wait on camera and no more, bro. So honestly, if he's not like at least play it like. If, if, if he's not at least what DeAndre Hunter was this season for the Hawks, as ter- in terms of like development and making that next step, then he's not going to be a Hawk past like next past this trade de- trade deadline twenty twenty two or twenty twenty one or whatever it is. I like can't see it. in my like when I was when I was looking at that draft and I looked at DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish, so I was like, DeAndre Hunter is going to be solid, but yeah. Cam Reddish is either gonna be like a disappointment or Paul George. That's what I was thinking. Like he's either gonna be like a big disappointment or the second option next to Trey Young. Yeah. And right now it's really unknown. And I'm gonna, not gonna say either or because I feel like people put the bus label on people too quickly. Yeah. Um, he just hasn't played enough games. And yeah, that's really all I can say. That's about super Cam true. Reddish. That's super true. I agree with that. Um, I made. I remember I made a video like almost all my videos in, back in summer 2019. Whenever I spoke about Cam Reddish, I would I would always say literally that this man's a boom or bust type of like project. He's boom or bust potential player, and there's no ifs ands or buts about it. And I think like almost literally every Hawks fan said what you just said, including myself. This man, Cam Reddish, he's either going to be like really damn good or really damn bad, and I, a lot I, of Hawks fans projected a role player, you know. <laughs> like yeah, he has exactly. To, yeah, exactly. There, there's no such thing as as like a role player, Cam Reddish, or like you know, what I'm saying key minutes, Cam Reddish. Like, no, you're getting either the full 39 or you're getting like none. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But also, a lot of Hawks fans just thought he would be better than DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter was known to be super solid, the most solid player out of the not the most solid player, but you know, what I'm saying one of the more 
consistent, reliable players. With Cam Reddish, his potential was just, he was just oozing potential, driving potential, and just could do things with the ball that DeAndre Hunter just simply like could not do and was never known to do. And it was that simple. Yeah. But now I want to talk about this 2018 NBA draft, man. It was wow. Like looking back, um, I'm about to pull pull it up. Like looking back, man. MPJ, you got Luca and Trey. Obviously, Shea, DeAndre Ayton has come alive. These um, especially in the playoffs, bro. Like yeah, the and, the role players in this draft are crazy, bro. The role yeah. players is crazy. Crazy role. Well, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. There's Devonte Graham. There's Kevin Herter. There's Dante Divincenzo. There's yeah. I could mention Josh Kogi. There's yeah. Bruce Excellent. Brown. Bruce Brown was in this draft too, which is crazy Jaren hell. Jackson. Yeah, Darren Jackson. Bro. Oh my gosh. Trent, I didn't even imagine Trent, that. Trent, Shake Milton. Larry Sham Landry Shaman. Wow. Lonnie Walker, Mitch Robinson, even people like Aaron Holiday, DeAnthony yeah. Melton. Do you already see Yeah. yeah. The, bro, this Robert, show was deep as hell. Robert Williams. Bro, what? Bro, like, yeah. this d- draft class is insane. And it seems like the only people that didn't hit were the Kings and the Sixers, bro. Like, oh, my <laughs> goodness. In the magic. In the yeah. magic. Like, bro. Yeah, bro. The Clippers almost the Clippers almost missed fully, but they, they ended up getting Shea. Yeah. Um, they got Jer- Jerome Robinson. That's crazy. Um. Yeah, but this draft class, this draft class is insane. And if Luca and Trey Young keep up what they're doing right now, and, and be like keep that up and win some championship stuff like that, da da da. And MPJ, Colin Sexton, Shea, DeAndre Ayton, and maybe like a surprise player becomes like a better like an all star like Kyle Lowry or something like that later in their career. This could be like one of the best draft classes of all time, and that's really cool to say because we're both Mavs and Hawks fans. Yeah. And, and that trade will probably go down as one of like the most like one of the most even trades of all time, depending on what Cam Reddish becomes, because um Cam Reddish is still a unknown factor in that trade. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I definitely agree with that. With the projectile that Trey is on and Luke Luke is good grief. My God, he's out of no words can describe him, bro. Literally no words can describe him. Honestly, I think he's like a top three player in the M- oh, man. It's tough. He's in the top five conversation. He's top five in general. I don't care. But then, like, yeah, he is. But then, like, I, I saw, like, Switch I was like, you can't even make top tens anymore. This is just, like, he tweeted that. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that, that's true because, like, I've seen people put Luca after these playoffs, I've seen people put Luca at nine and eight. And I yeah. look at it, like, no. I, I, mean, I can argue it, but I couldn't call you stupid for putting him there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then, call you stupid for putting him at three either and that's just a crazy thing to say bro yeah that's super that's super super true bro for me he's like four right now he's like yeah four. there's lebron there's kd lebron kd curry and then there's luca and that's it for me bro that's it for me but back to like your original point about the 2018 nba draft like is this is this yeah. insane the amount of role players and the star star power like the ratio is perfect, perfect. Couldn't get no better. Yeah, like, um, what was I about to say? Yeah, I can see people putting Harden over him, maybe, but I, I, I take Luca, um, Jokic too, but I take Luca. Yeah. I, I, Embiid, Embiid. I'm taking Luca. Yeah, yeah, Luca, Luca, though, but Embiid is different, bro. Forty on a torment, uh, on a torment. In this case, I ain't gonna lie, that's kind of tough, bro. That's tough. yeah, I know. It is. I'm not gonna lie. It's tough, but bro, like I'm taking Lucas strictly for the, because of durability, like durability reasons. The best yeah. ability in basketball is availability, mm-hmm. and B don't have that for on like the regular. You don't have that on a consistent basis compared to Luca, bro. I knew Luca wasn't the greatest shooter, but I yeah maybe it's a confidence thing at the line. I don't know what's really going on with him at the free throw line, but he needs to figure um, that out bro, because um. It was getting kind of bad in that Clipper series, bro. Like yeah. at some point, it was getting bad. He kind of got the percentages up by the end, but at a point, it was bad, bro. Like the, the <laughs> that was like forty six percent or some point, something like that. That's he was crazy. shooting higher three point 
three point percentage, then free throw percentage would make would, which makes that's me, so backwards. That's that that just shows right there. Like that's in the NBA, like like one of my go to things whenever I look at like college prospects and just like NBA players, you know what I'm saying in general. Like if you're a good free throw shooter, then you're an elite. Not you're you're either an above average or elite like three point shooter and just shooter in general. There's no and it's buts around it. And for guys like LeBron James or guys like the Luka Doncic, like they're not bad shooters whatsoever. I wouldn't say LeBron's a bad shooter. I wouldn't say he's a great shooter. But mm-hmm. when I'm to, when mentioning Luka Doncic, I think he's a good shooter. He's a shooter. Like you just can't leave him open. He's just one of those type of players. And seeing his percentages on the free throw makes- line just tells you it's like something's wrong with up here when you're at the line. There's yeah. no way. There's players like that. Him, LeBron, I'd say. Um, there's like just players that um, you know can shoot, but if you like, if you're in film and you're looking at the statue, like that dude can't shoot though, but you know he can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that must be a weird thing to go through as like a coach or people writing up game plans because you're not gonna leave him open because that step back gives him plus ten three point per, three point ability for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> step back is different, bro. Um, but I, uh, like I said, I, I told you we were going to redraft the top 10 of the 2018 NBA draft. Um, Let's go for it. I, I just want to see – I really wanted to do this because I wanted to see who's going to get left out because there's going to be some decent role players that are going to get left out, and I kind of wanted to see um, who that was. So you can go first. Uh, it doesn't really matter the team, but like you can go first and obviously who you pick in. Okay, obviously Luka. And then Trey Young second. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up the 2018 draft because I don't want to make <laughs> yeah. any mistakes and you're not going to slide yeah. me real quick. So I'm pulling out the draft class right now. Yeah. Okay, so Absolutely. you got I got I got Trey. I mean, you got Trey. I got Luca. Cool. Oh yeah, man. Damn, I just saw a name that we didn't even mention. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give get me uh eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go and get Shagulin. Shay, 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 Shay. Yeah, I, I meant to. I meant to pick. Okay, cool. You got Shay. That's cool because I got MPJ. MPJ, MPJ. Okay. Um, I got. This is tough. I got Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton. Fuck. Okay, you got Colin. Colin. That's, yeah. that's, that's like no the only biggie. person that's not in the playoffs right now, bro. That's yeah. like a good. Him and Shea, like the only two. It's no biggie because I got I got Jaron Jackson Jr. All right, so Luca Trey, then um, Luca Trey, then Aiton, then no, then Shea Aiton, Sexton mm-hmm. Porter, and then you just picked up who? I just picked up Jaron Jackson Jr. All right, I got um, I got Mikael Bridges. Ooh, that was gonna be my next pick. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, so I'm looking at my list. Who I got left, and I'm gonna go for. Shit, I'm a homer, man. I'm gonna go for Kevin Herter. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, I knew you were about to do that, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm a homer. Um, shit, I might have to go with Marvin. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm oh, go with that. Man, I'm a, yeah, for real. He's like the only one up there, bro. He's like he's gonna be like dark on Milicic if this draft fight goes like really, really good, bro. That's tough. Yeah, bro. You, um I'm gonna go with Mitchell Robinson though. Yeah, Mitchell mm, Robinson. Sweet move, yeah. sweet move. You got Mitchell Robinson, I got Devontae Graham. No, you already Wait. got five. You already got five. Oh fuck you. Got, right. okay, you, got, cool. you got Luca. Aiton, Porter, Jackson, and Hooter, and I got Trey, Sexton, Shea, um, that guard Shea, is crazy, Bridges, and Robinson. That, mm. that bro, that's ten really good players, and we have Devontae Graham left out, Wendell Carter, Gary Trent Jr., Miles Bridges, Shake Milton, Jalen Brunson, Landry Shaman. Jalen Brunson Don- is so nice, bro. Huh? Yeah, Jalen Brunson. Yeah, at the at the in the in the playoffs, Rick Carlisle, bro. Oh my god, bro. Rick Carlisle just like kind of took him out the rotation a little bit for no reason and gave Josh Richardson more minutes, which is one of the the most underrated terrible trades that I've seen ever. 
giving up <laughs> Seth Curry. Like just like yeah. they just gave him up. Like that was so strictly because of the defensive reasons. That's why and they thought like at the moment, Josh Richardson. I remember he he was putting up inflated stats in um, Miami. I think he came. I think they did that trade before Jimmy Butler was a. No, no, no. He, did that in, um, and, uh, he was in Philly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. You're you're right. I remember <laughs> that. I was, I'm tripping he balls. He sucked in Philly. He sucked in Philly, bro. Fuck. You're right. I'm tripping balls. Yeah. Fuck. He's, yeah. Romp will always be like, bro, Josh Richardson sucks. Da, 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 da. Josh Richardson sucks. <laughs> and then, like, they just trade him for Seth Curry one day. I'm like, bro, what are we doing? Like, that was so I stupid. Bro, it, yeah, he, it was bad. so unmemorable. It, yeah, it was It was yeah. unmemorable. But it was cool. It was cool. It was unmemorable. Yeah. Shit. Like, bro. He sucked. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's not that good whatsoever, bro. He's good, but in, in doses, in doses, bro. He and he takes a lot of like contested shots, like he's a good shooter, and then he can't hit catch and shoot shots. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad with him, bro. It's bad with him. But yeah, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time, bro. That's the end. I'm gonna probably do a like a draft with probably every guest that I can get on. Um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be weekly. Because like I'm not sure if I can get guests weekly, but this was really fun with, to do a Mojo 99. Um, hopefully, I can have him back on soon, like in in, in a sure. later date. But uh, thanks for coming on, Mojo. If you like this type of content, go ahead sub on the channel. Um, I do daily post game recaps and like daily NBA content every single day. So if y'all like that, go ahead and sub, and I'll see you guys next time.